Ah, oh, you're getting the letters? It's a trick. It's, it's, it's UX on the bottom, yes, if you can't see it. And those are the last two. There are lots of letters, and there's an X. So that's part of the fun. What are you going to do with an X? Well, good morning, everyone. No matter where you are, who you are, when you are, we are here on this land that was taken from the Wabanaki people, the Penobscot tribe, and uh, is been stewarded for generations and is up to us to care for now. And so we honor this space and we respect the fact that we're not all in this same physical space and we welcome those who are somewhere else and perhaps at another time watching this on a recording for it doesn't matter who you are or where you are or when you are you are welcome here this is a safe space for all no matter what pronouns you use or how you um, express yourself or who you love you are welcome in this space and we strive to make it safe for all and today we are not going to talk about safety are we because it's palm sunday it's also passion sunday we will not take the tram ride from hosanna to hallelujah we will enter into the dark valley that comes between the place where the difficult times happen because we don't shy away from that we understand that christ leads us on that journey from the hillside into the city where difficult and terrible things happen uh, before the resurrection next week. And so I pray that you will go with us on this journey. We begin it today and then we sit with it during the week. But we do have our palms. If you if you um, are here and you didn't get one, you're going to want one because we're going to wave them at the beginning to uh, recreate our own entry into Jerusalem. And uh, if you're at home, I guess you've got your palms, right? You know, you wave your, your palm in your hand. That'll that'll work too. Uh, so we are we're going to begin there and go on a journey. We will also have um, a remembrance of the Last Supper, not only on Thursday, but today as well, being the first of the month, we're going to celebrate communion. So it will comfortably take us into that journey. So uh, if you're uh, Again, if you're at home, you might want to grab something for elements for that meal when we get to that at the end of the service. And we have been using as an anchor image for this series, the game Scrabble, trying to find all of these, try to find meaning and message in all of these letters. And here are today's letters. Uh, and at some point out, it's hard to see the bottom two, they're U and X. <laughs> so if you're uh, playing along, try to figure out what you might make out of that, because we've been looking for love, looking for messages of how God loves us in all of these things. And uh, we are remembering that it's not something we do alone, that people watch us. And that's why we have this window number, which is up to 936. That, that represents our reach on Facebook during this time of Lent. And during this time of Lent, just during this time of Lent, we have done outreach of 536 folks have been reached through our ministries here. And so we remember that people see what we're about and understand the message of Christ's love for us, God's love for us in Christ by seeing how we live our message. And so we remind ourselves of that message each week to ground us and to send us forward into worship, knowing what we are here for. And those are the words of our mission statement, which I invite us to share together now. <clears throat> Seeking to walk in the way of Jesus, we are an open and affirming church, faithfully using who we are and what we have to serve those on the margins of our community no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here.
the disciples must have been excited and terrified all at once. The entrance into Jerusalem for Passover week had turned into a big deal. How would Jesus be received by the people and by the authorities? And an entrance can define perception. Surely they would make as big a splash of confidence as possible. And then Jesus asks for a donkey. A donkey? Once again, Jesus demonstrates a love for peace and a love for common people by creating an entrance that proclaimed the power of God's kingdom of heaven, not Herod's kingdom of oppression. Looking for love? Keep your eyes out for it in unexpected places. Our first reading for scripture this morning is from Psalm 118, 1 through 2, and 19 through 29 from the message. Thank God because God is good, because God's love never quits. Tell the world, Israel, God's love never quits. Swing wide the city gates, the righteous gates. I'll walk right through and thank God. This temple gate belongs to God, so the victors can enter and praise. Thank you for responding to me. You've truly become my salvation. The stone the masons discarded as flawed is now the capstone. This is God's work. We rub our eyes. We can hardly believe it. This is the very day God acted. Let's celebrate and be festive. Salvation now, God. Salvation now. Oh, yes, God, a free and full life. Blessed are you who enter in God's name. From God's house we bless you. God is God. God has bathed us in light. Adorn the shrine with garlands. Hang colored banners above the altar. You are my God, and I thank you. O oh my God, I lift high your praise. Thank God, God is so good. God's love never quits. Okay, so who knows this song? Do we have it yet? Everybody should know that. Yeah. Everybody, right? Or anybody? Oh, yeah, just, there, I heard yeses. Just lie. <laughs> that means you need to be enthusiastic because this song cannot be sung without enthusiasm. No. Uh, no. <laughs> so can, can we, how 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 how's everybody's? Uh, we're not sure what language. It, I think it, it might be Swahili. It, it might be Swahili. Swahili. Might be Zosha. Zosha. I'm not sure. See Ahamba, Ekukwen, Great Coast. It just repeats. Everything repeats. And when we get to the chorus, you have palms. You know how to use them. And and you and you don't have to stay in your seat, especially if you're a child with a lot of energy. You have freedom to run around and wave the palms. Got it? Burn up all the energy you have because that's what happened on Palm Sunday. And then we'll just say, should we just do it all in English? Yeah. Ah, okay, fine. Uh, <laughs> So, so we will be marching, and then I'll be looking for suggestions for other things we might do. Dance, sing, snooze. I don't know. What are we doing in the light of God? Suggestions first, and then we'll just say them again when we get to them. Okay. So marching. Marching. We will march. What's the next one? Singing. Okay. And then we will sing. Loving. What? Loving. Loving? Oh, that's good. That's a good one. That was good. <laughs> Dancing. So we'll call them out. We'll just sing them. Okay? Can we do this? We could try. All right. David, bring us into this. Stand up. Let's do this. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light of God. Marching in the light of God, we are marching. 
One more march. We are Reminds me, uh, there'll be a Sunday. There's, there's a Sunday this summer when I won't be here because I'm going to go see Dead and Company, and it's just I don't know what this why this put me in mind of that. The dancing maybe was. Uh... It's going to be just like just like yeah. that. Anyway. Jesus is coming! Woohoo! I'm waving my palms! It's Palm Sunday, everybody! Hey, welcome! It's Palm Sunday! Are you having a parade? <laughs> I'm having my own little parade. Okay, let me put my palms away. All right, I'm back, everybody. Let's start by saying our echo poem together. We come today, and we're here to say, We're looking for love in just the right way. For Jesus is clear when we listen to hear his love for us is oh so dear. everybody. So I know you've heard the story of Palm Sunday before and I know that you know that Jesus came riding into town on a donkey and that is kind of an unusual animal for Jesus to be riding on but I don't think you understand how unusual it was. It's kind of like have you ever watched the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade or well, really any big parade, there's generally one important person called the marshal and they're honored in the parade and they ride usually in a fancy vehicle, maybe a convertible car and they wave to the crowd. And it's important that their vehicle be sort of fancy and decorated. So everyone knows that they're very important in the parade. Well, Jesus was that very important person coming into town. So for him to not be riding, say, a big, fine horse with a beautiful flowing mane, but instead to be riding on a donkey was very unexpected. Which brings us to our Scrabble words of the day. Expect the unexpected. That's sort of what Jesus did with his whole life. He always taught us to expect the unexpected to find love in unexpected places. During his life, Jesus often did very unexpected things. People expected him to be just a preacher who sort of stood in front of people and told them how to act. They didn't expect him to hang out with people they thought were not so cool. They didn't expect him to hang out with women and children in that time. That was not expected or common. They didn't expect him to hang out with people who belonged to different faiths or came from different countries, but he did because he was setting an example for all of us. He was reminding us that we shouldn't always look for love in those flashy, exciting, fancy things but in the things that are all around us every day, the things we already have in our lives. Love the people we have in our lives, love the places we live, love everything around us, just as it is. Because God is love. 
and love is God. Amen. Our second reading is from Matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 11 from the Inclusive Bible. As they approached Jerusalem, entering Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent off two disciples with the instructions. Go into the village straight ahead of you, and immediately you will find a tethered donkey with her colt standing beside her. Untie them and lead them back to me. If anyone questions you, say, the rabbi needs them. Then they will let them go at once. This came about to fulfill what was said through the prophet. Tell the daughter of Zion, your sovereign comes to you without display, riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. So the disciples went off and did what Jesus had ordered. They brought the donkey and her colt, and after they laid their cloaks on the animals, Jesus mounted and rode toward the city. Great crowds of people spread their cloaks on the road, while some began to cut branches from the trees and lay them along the path. The crowds, those who went in front of Jesus and those who followed, were all shouting, Hosanna to the heir to the house of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Most High. Hosanna in the highest. As Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred to its depths, demanding, Who is this? And the crowd kept answering, This is the prophet Jesus, the Naz Nazareth, and Galilee. know that I've ever felt a time that I was didn't feel loved uh, so it's a little hard to address that uh, maybe a month or two after a divorce you know that's that's kind of a downtime and I a lot of folks have shared that experience or felt that experience that, that we have in common but uh, you know in in my first marriage uh, I felt loved uh, up to a certain point, you know, that, that's how those things go. And I'm very grateful for Joanne, whom you know, and and her whole family that have just accepted me. And uh, and the kids, you know, I'm still Bill, even to the grandchildren, uh, and not grandpa or something like that, but I, I that's fine. And I don't see that as a lack of acceptance, uh, but, but, you know, I'm, um, how to put this? Feel very comfortable there and respected and loved. And uh, so that's just kind of a general thing. It's not a specific point in time, but uh, I just get to the point where I feel good about that.
Love, thy will be done. I can no longer hide. I can no longer run. No longer can I resist the guiding light. It gives me the power to keep up the fight. Love, will be done. Since I found you, my life just began, and I see all of your creations, perfect, complex, no less beautiful, or special than the next. We are blessed and so wise to accept. Thy will, love, be done. Love, thy will be mine, and make me to strive for the glorious and divine. I could not be more satisfied, even though there's no peace outside my window. There's peace inside, and that's why I no longer run. Love, thy will. I can no longer hide. I can no longer run. Love, thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will, love be done. Theology matters. It matters because it's the lens through which we make meaning. Whether we know it or not, right? Whether you intend it or not, whether you approach something knowing that you have a theological construct that you've already determined how God ought to be, and then you look for that, or whether it just is the lens, and so that you don't see other ways of understanding who God is and how God is working in the world. And the dominant theology in our culture and likely a theology that many of us were raised with or at least take in in some way without knowing is Calvinism. And probably the most clear theology, the, the theological point of Calvinism that people struggle with is predestination, right? That God is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-controlling, and knows everything and is going to make everything happen according to God's plan. Kind of like a grand chess game and we're just pawns. Right? And a lot of times that's where people say, oh, I can't accept that. I need another way. But we don't always come up with another way, do we? We just kind of reject it and, and flounder about a bit. But chess is a good metaphor for how we live this life, right? All those calculations, all those moves, all that planning ahead. And maybe God is playing a game with us, but maybe it's with us. Maybe we're not the pawns. Maybe we're the other player. What, what might that look like? Now, God is, of course, the greatest chess master in this scenario, and we're never going to win, right? <laughs> There's that problem. What does that look like? What does it look like that, that maybe God does know all the plans, moves ahead, and has it all figured out, and we're just trying to keep up? What would the point of that be? Is, are we in competition with God? Now, that's not what we believe either, is it? If we, if we think about what we truly believe, what our actual theology is, we kind of believe that God is on our side. So maybe this playing doesn't make sense. But what if... What if God is a great chess master who's trying to teach us to also master the game? Wouldn't that involve a few losses? I mean, 
if you start, if you've never played a game before and you're playing with the expert, the expert's going to beat you every time, right? But the expert might also provoke in you learning that you learn through lessons, you know, life lessons, the, oh, goody, another life lesson, right? Maybe that's where we are in this. Or maybe that's what God is doing with us. There's another school of theology called process theology, which doesn't assert that God knows everything and is controlling everything, that it's more like a chess master who plans ahead and has greater knowledge than the opponent, but tries to provoke change in you. Process theology would assert that, that God does things in relationship to humanity and then waits to see how we'll respond, gives us free will to determine that, and then God replies to that. So very much like a back and forth of a chess match. That doesn't mean that God is not in control. God knows the outcome because God has superior knowledge than we are, but maybe, just maybe, there are some surprises along the way. Maybe it isn't all predestined. And maybe that's really scary, right? One thing about predestination is there's comfort in knowing that God's in control of everything. It gives you some of the blame, if nothing else, right? <laughs> but what if this is not about God winning and us losing, but about everybody winning? That is a different sort of game. That it's the sort of thing where what we know more than anything else is that God is with us and wants us to win. What if we hold on to that? Maybe the metaphor falls apart a little bit then if we talk about chess. Maybe we need to talk about Scrabble. Because we have been talking about Scrabble, right? And I know Scrabble is competitive, but it doesn't have to be, does it? You could work together with others to try to create a board that is just sublime with all the best scores and all the most wonderful letters. And in Scrabble, there certainly is the unexpected, right? And they're not always pleasant. You pick up the Q and you don't have a U in your hand. <laughs> that's, not, that's, not, that's not a happy, no, <laughs> unexpected event. Right. You put letters up and they fall down. That's, that's not, not real pleasant either. Or you pick up an X and you're like, what am I going to do with that? But then sometimes the, the unexpected is a wonderful surprise, that blank. <laughs> the blank tile, full of possibility. You could do anything you want with it. Maybe that's a better metaphor for how we live life, that God wants us to find the best words, to have the greatest score, to work with us, to make us all, whether what team we're on, work together to create cross words of beauty. Maybe that's where God is in this world. And maybe dealing with those unexpected things is a reminder that, well, God's our dictionary, right? God will give us the words if we ask. So when you have a Q and no U, what are you going to do? Anybody Scrabble players? You've got those words? Do you know the, there's a handful of them. One of the best, it's, uh, I didn't count the letters, it's long, Kabbalistic. <sighs> That's a big score, right? Q-A-B-I-L-I-S-T-I-C, Kabbalistic. Anybody know what it means? It means, let me see if I wrote the definition down. Um, meaning, it's uh, to have a secret or hidden meaning. If something's Kabbalistic, it has a secret or hidden meaning. And it actually comes from Jewish practice. You've probably heard of Kabbalism, right? Mm -hmm. looking, at, looking at the Hebrew scriptures and trying to figure out um, secret meanings behind them. It can get kind of conspiracy theory-ish, <laughs> but it's also spiritual and mystical, saying that there's a meaning behind the meaning. What a wonderful word for us to hold on to going into this Holy Week, because Jesus clearly was telling us in living his ministry in a way that proclaimed that there's a meaning that you're not seeing here. There's a hidden secret meaning. And that what's on the surface, what you think is happening, isn't necessarily what's happening. On Palm Sunday, when he chose to ride into Jerusalem on a donkey, it was not just some street theater 
which I'm sure it was. I'm sure there was the mimicking of the riding of the great steed and the chariots and all that that Pilate would have used to come into the same city, probably days before or even at the same time. I mean, one can imagine that Jesus is providing an alternate parade to the power of Rome by saying, let's go in by this gate and I'm going to ride on a donkey instead of a horse. There, there's that. There's all of that that we can imagine. But it's also pretty clear, at least in Matthew's mind, that Jesus was reading the book of Zechariah and working it out. The prophecies of Zechariah are, are clear in Holy Week because Zechariah talks about the king coming on a donkey. Zechariah also talks about 30 pieces of silver. Sounds familiar from Holy Week, doesn't it? And the last line of Zechariah, Zechariah talks about the, uh, the house of God is, it no longer has traitors in it. Sounds a lot like Jesus flipping the tables, right? So I think that Jesus had Zechariah in mind. Whether the people around there knew that and whether Matthew figured it out then or much later when he wrote the gospel, it's pretty clear that that's what's happening. But this king that rides into Jerusalem on a donkey has just conquered all the enemies in Zechariah. That's the vision. That the king is humble even though the king deserves all the glory because the king has killed all the enemies, basically. And so it's fair to assume that if anybody in that parade said, oh, I see what he's doing. This is, this is the prophecy of Zechariah. They would have naturally concluded that means that he's going to overthrow the Romans. And that ain't what happens that week, is it? They would have been sorely disappointed because there was something Kabbalistic happening here. There was a meaning behind the meaning. Jesus is playing out his hand, the cards that he's dealt, the tiles that he has, and says, look, this is like Zechariah, but it's not. There is something different happening here. There is an invitation to see things and live things differently. This final week of Jesus' life, he not only taught that, but he lived it. He lived the unexpected in an ultimate challenge to those who had the eyes to see and the ears to hear. And so as we contemplate that this day, we will come to the table and remember that week and look for the meaning behind the meeting. We come to God with what we have. And it may not seem like much. It might seem like X's and Q's without U's. But it also might be a blank tile that's not just blank, but full of possibility. So consider what it is you have to offer and offer that to God this day, your time, your talent, and indeed your treasure. Using our online portal, if you can, making it recurring if possible. And if you're here in the room, the plate is by the door that you may use on the way out. As we prepare to come to the table of Jesus, just as he called his disciples to his table in the days after that triumphant procession, let us join together in a prayer of confession, first singing the ancient words of the Kyrie as we seek God's mercy. Holy and merciful one, in this season of discernment, we have come bringing our deepest longings and our failed attempts at satisfying them. We have confessed that we often looked for love, for acceptance and security in the spectacular and mighty of this world while denigrating the common and simple ways we could love more fully. We yearn for lives that matter. We desire relationships that thrive. We want less regret. 
At times we fail to see that you have already given us what really matters, your love and acceptance. You provide opportunities all around us to make a difference in the lives of others. You give us a fresh start each day, inviting us to do better. In this silence, we bring to you our pleas for openness to a different way of living. My friends, be assured by the psalmist who has said, God is good and God's steadfast love endures forever. Let us respond together. We open our hearts, our minds, our souls, our vision, to ways of love created by God, embodied in Jesus and already moving in us by the Spirit. We are forgiven, loved, and free. Amen. We are going to learn a song that we are going to sing to each other for our passing of the peace. I believe we may have sung it before, but uh, it's very simple. And it's three words that mean peace. So I'm gonna sing it through once. And then uh, as we sing it again, we will pass the peace to each other. All right. Peace, salam, shalom. 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 Let's pass the peace to each other. Peace, salam, shalom. Peace, salam, shalom. We now come before our God with our joys and concerns. So I would invite first those who are online, if anyone has a joy or concern that you would like us to lift up in prayer, uh, feel free to unmute yourself and share that. Uh, please use the chat for recording any that you would like us to include in our weekly email. Is there, is there anyone online? With yeah. Prayers for the hungry and the homeless. This is our prayer. Also prayers for um, Rev Mo, who uh, has been exposed to COVID and is not feeling well. Um, her first test was negative, but she asked that we pray for her. Um, and also um, I'm waiting to hear as to whether I've been exposed to COVID. So. This is our prayer. Anyone else online? Uh, anyone in the room, if you raise your hand, we'll bring the mic to you. Continuing prayers for Ann Hood as we continue to wait for scan results for some answers in her medical care. That's our prayer. Prayers for Denise, myself, and the family as we care for her. That's our prayer. And prayers of safe travels for Margot, Herb and Regina, and Linda as they travel back here. This is our prayer.
Uh, prayers for my friend Dean, who had a GI bleed and uh, is in the hospital, but hoping to go home soon. This is our prayer. Uh, let's pray for all those who are dealing with mental health issues these days. This is our prayer. Also, I'd like to ask for prayer for the Collegium program next Saturday, because last, last Wednesday we had our last rehearsal, and it was far from good, so I, I'm, I'm really very scared. So please, let's have your, our prayers on the Collegium uh, Kobe performance. This is our prayer. And third one, also let's pray. Uh, this is a, a personal ask. Uh, we are in April and I haven't heard from Kobe yet about renewing my contract. So I'm kind of stressed out. So this is our prayer. Nancy asks us to pray for her sister Noella having cancer surgery on Tuesday. And her son Peter having a knee replacement on Wednesday. This is our prayer. And uh, Sally is asking us to pray for Frank Russell and Robin Kramer and Robin's daughter, who is helping them out as Frank has a hip replacement on Tuesday and Robin has her left shoulder repaired. This is our prayer. So we're keeping the surgical rooms busy this week. So keep everyone in our prayers. Let us take some silence to lift up those other concerns that we hold close to our hearts, those things that we do not share aloud, but our God certainly knows. Let us pray. Oh God, by now you'd think we would know to expect the unexpected from you. And that we should know that the unexpected is always unexpectedly good, even when it doesn't seem that way to us. So help us to open ourselves to your direction, to trust in you, to trust that your love will sustain us as it always has and always will that you hear our prayers and know our hearts and that your great love will bring healing, even if it's not as we expect, but will be for the best in some vision of your kingdom, not far away, but brought near to us that we might live in it, live in it the way that you showed us by being one of us, walking among us, and proclaiming your presence here as you did that through Jesus, who left for us a prayer that would bind us together with your people in all times and places, the prayer we pray together now. Our Father. May love be with you. And also be with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Turn on yet. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, love eternal, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we could not fathom your endless love and we turned away your love, when we turned away, your love remains steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God 
and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise the name of love and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 Lord, of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. What love you have given us in your child, Jesus Christ. Your spirit poured out through him as he brought good news, proclaimed freedom, healed and fed. His life of love shows us the way. His life of love delivers us from false hopes. His life, death and resurrection offered ultimate and enduring love. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this love in Jesus Christ, we offer our love completely as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Let us pray together a prayer consecrating these elements, making them holy for our purpose. Pour out your love and spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the love of Christ, so that we may be for the world the love of Christ. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other. Jesus took the familiar and expected in this meal and offered it to his friends in a very shocking and unexpected way. He shared with them that this was his body and his blood. And no doubt that's something that haunted them for the rest of the events of that horrible Friday and unexpected Sunday. And we have the advantage of hindsight looking back and seeing that what Jesus was telling us was that in this brokenness, there was this covenant of forgiveness for no matter how much we hurt and hate and kill, God still loves us. God maintains us in unexpected love through all of this and offers to us these, the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us partake of the feast. Let us pray. Loving God, we cannot fathom the depths of your love. 
we continue to marvel at those things that we don't expect. We certainly don't feel like we deserve the gifts that you offer us, but we thank you for filling us with the joy that comes from receiving these gifts. Empower us to be your people this day and every day, in every time and every place that you present to us, knowing that we are loved. Amen. Today's Palm Sunday, and it's also the second day of Poetry Month. So um, this will surprise you, but I'm going to celebrate Poetry Month today by reading a poem. An Earth Song by Langston Hughes. It's an Earth Song, and I've been waiting long for an Earth Song. It's a Spring Song, and I've been waiting long for a Spring Song. Strong as the shoots of a new plant, strong as the bursting of new buds, strong as the coming of the first child from its mother's womb. It's an earth song, a body song, a spring song. I have been waiting long for the spring song. Thank you, Sally. Mm -hmm. I think the only surprise is that you didn't recite it from memory, <laughs> but uh, that was wonderful. Um, it's appropriate that, uh, that you were the one to do our uh, Creation Care Moment today because our first announcement is that our latest uh, installment of the People of Waterville UCC with our wonderful host, Sally, <laughs> is now available. If you haven't seen it, we have it uh, posted on our YouTube channel, and there's a link on our Facebook page, and Dave Hedrick is the... Uh, subject this this time and we have a few more in the can as i say there are more coming so hope you enjoy them and uh get to know one another in ways maybe you didn't know before so that's coming up or it's happening but what is coming up is thursday thursday we are celebrating remembering commemorating maundy thursday together with our uh, siblings from um, winslow and benton falls they will come here and we will have a hybrid interactive time together. So if it's uh, a little dark for you to travel, you wanna stay at home, be our guest. You will definitely be involved in the service. We are going to begin by playing Scrabble together because you know we can't talk about Scrabble for six weeks and then not play. So the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna take that camera and point it straight down on the table so we can all see it and we're gonna do it collectively, collaboratively, non-competitively, right? We're gonna work together. So if you are online, um, you can work the uh, dictionaries for us. Uh, you'll be you'll be you'll have them at your fingertips you know uh, but we'll all work together and we'll do that for a while and the call to worship as it were will be sometime around not before but uh, around 6 30 when we'll say hey we're hungry let's eat and we'll have a meal together so if you are at home make sure you got something to eat because that will be part of the service if you're here it'll be something simple we'll have some bread and we'll have some soup that it soup a couple soups something like that so a light meal uh if it's not enough food for you um you know eat before or after whatever works for you but the idea is we're going to remember that meal together and um have some conversation around tables the zoom room will be its own table and uh then we'll gather for a toast after the meal so everyone will need something to drink and the toast will be each person having an opportunity or to pass if you feel so inclined but to have an opportunity to answer the question we've been asking and answering each week with um, give us a story about a time when you have known love and uh, we'd like it to be about a minute because you know we have things to do and places to go we want to go home but uh that's uh and then and then we will light a candle at the end so if you're at home have a candle if you're here we'll have those um, battery powered ones to do and that will be how we finish our service on thursday uh, on friday there are a number of options around town if you're interested in doing something for uh, good friday 
next slide. Um, and this will be in our, uh, our weekly news as well. The uh, Winslow Church is having an indoor labyrinth walk from 4.30 to 6. And Pleasant Street and St. Mark's each have services on uh, Good Friday in the evening, if that's something that you'd like to be a part of. Those are opportunities for us to share ecumenically with our partners. Um, also coming up, we have agreed to be part of the Small Church Story Project, and that means that the Reverend Doug Dunlap will be back to ask us our answers to those questions, which we put out in our uh, weekly newsletter, and uh, he's coming on the 30th of April, and so if we want to have answers, we should probably have some conversation, right? <laughs> the important part is that each person has thought about it in advance, but we'll do that um, intentionally together on our Thursday evening um, Zoom meeting, which we have each week. We'll just, the week after Monday Thursday on the uh, 13th, we'll just commit our time to answering those questions, which I don't have before me, but they're pretty simple, like, why this church? What does this do for you? What does it mean to be a part of this small church? So um, that will be our conversation that Thursday. And then the following Thursday, we will be getting close to uh, Earth Day, and there is an opportunity to, um, to participate with the BTS Center in what they're calling a Lament with Earth. And it's uh, an online ritual with music and poetry and images and scripture. And I imagine it will be good because the group that's doing the music is The Many. We've heard their music before. We've used it in our worship. Um, they really do some great liturgical stuff. And since it will be on the theme that we will be looking at, that will be our Thursday gathering after that on the 20th. Uh, I mention it because you need to register. You need to go to the BTS Center and say, I want to be a part of it to get the link. My hunch is that once one of us has the link, we can share it. It probably works for everybody, but, you know, they want you to register. So uh, that, again, will be in uh, margin notes this week. Um, and then uh, another thing to register for is the upcoming Alive and Thrive Any Size uh, program that our conference minister, Marisa Laviola, is presenting in Winthrop on the 22nd. And uh, it would be great because that's the one close to us, the one that, that we're kind of expected to go to. It'd be great if a number of us can go because we have a story to tell. That's why I keep hearing when I talk to folks in the wider church. There are a lot of congregations looking to do things like we have already done. And that's going to be a big part of what is presented there. And so um, I know that Marisa has asked specifically if we might come to make sure that we're there to tell our stories because it'll be important. So I hope that we number of us can register for that. Um, I know that Nancy said that she's Nancy, not this Nancy, Nancy online, Nancy Sanford has said that she's uh, got seats in her car. She's planning on going and she can carpool and we can talk about that as it gets close, how we want to do that. So Things that are coming up, and yes, next week is Easter, but you know, we didn't forget Easter. Come to church, we'll have Easter. <laughs> um, any other announcements? I know that uh, Laura wants to share something, and then we'll see if anybody else has something. Good morning, I just wanted to share a little bit about the essentials closet. Um, Ian has shown you, you know, how our numbers through the door were pretty great uh, for the month of March. Things continue to grow. The month of March, we met the numbers that we have had in our busiest months, which generally tend to be September, October. We haven't had this number of people uh, visit the closet uh, as we did this month. We actually had 173 people returning, 20 new households for a total of 193 households representing 364 people in the homes. And going along with this on Thursday evening this week, there were two gentlemen who came through the door. Um, they obviously, someone had clued them in that this was a good place to go and they eventually uh, were able to share with me that it was the Waterful Food Pantry who uh, suggested they might come here. Come to find out when I was talking with them, they pulled out their cell phones and they were speaking Arabic. I was speaking English. They would let me speak into their phone and it would translate for them. 
and then they would speak into the phone and it would translate for me. These gentlemen appear to be around the age of 50. I did find out they each have four children. They have been in this country five months. Uh, they do have main driver's licenses. They are from Syria. And they explained to me that they came to this country due to the fighting in Syria. And I'm thinking they must have, I didn't have further conversation, but they must have um, applied for visas or whatever to come to this country um, prior to this. They've been working a while at getting here, I think. They have children in the Waterville school system. They, these two gentlemen were so appreciative and almost, I said to Pete when I went home, they were almost like two little eight-year-old boys at Christmas time. They were giggling, they were happy, they were so pleased what, with, with what we had given them. And one of the men, not understanding what they were, picked, asked for a package of adult undergarments. They came back in shortly after and he said, we don't need these. We don't need these. I'm bringing them back to you. I'm thinking we're probably going to see these folks again, but those were just two of the 20 new clients we saw this month. I now have a list of different households who have come through our doors. The list is 1900 plus households in central Maine who have come through our doors. It's as I was talking with Ian this morning, it's sad that there are so many people in need, but it's such a good feeling as First Congregational Church of Waterville, we can supply these needs. If you take a moment on your way out to look in the essentials closet, you will see that our shelves are pretty bare. I made a big order yesterday. We have over 100 cases of items coming in um, a week from tomorrow. And so in another week, we will be picking those up and stocking our shelves once more, being ready. But thank you to all who donate to the Essentials Closet and a big special thank you to our volunteers who keep us all going. So thank you. When there are times I hear you tell those stories and I think, why not just tell you to just give the sermon? <laughs> That's, that's the message we need to hear. Thank you so much. Are there other announcements? Yes. You, music coming up. <laughs> oh, the microphone's up here. Well, they won't hear online. So, well, this Saturday at the Green Block in downtown Maine, at 7.30 p.m., uh, Kobe Collegium will present in Music She Wrote. It's a concert of music written exclusively by female composers and arrangers, and the theme is the refugee crisis in the world. So don't miss it, it's free. Come and bring your family. This Saturday, 7.30 p.m., at the Green Block in downtown Main Street. It's at 18 Main Street, right? The, the far end down towards the bridge. That's um, anything else? Anyone else? All right. Well, we now enter the week that we call the holiest of weeks in our liturgical year. And we have all felt the longing of love, and we have all felt the loss of love. We know that to love greatly means to risk feeling deep pain. And yet we were made for love. It is what gives life meaning and gives life purpose. And so let us begin our journey of reflection of this week, knowing that love looks for us. Let us sing our closing hymn.
Now may the love of God be with you all and all those whom you love and all those whom none but God loves. Now and until that day of God's judgment when justice will roll down like waters and peace will blossom among all the peoples. Go forth into the world looking for love in all the right places. We will look for signs of unexpected love, keeping watch for God's love where we receive.